This is Reviewer TV, and we are here with Michael Slattery, and uh, he is a uh, well-known photographer in San Diego. I remember you did a Cottonmouth Kings cover for Revolt and Style Magazine back in the day. What was that, like 19, 1999, 2000? It was before 2000, yeah. Like 98, 99. 99 yeah. yeah, I remember that, and uh, that, was, that was a big deal, and, and you've done a lot of covers for them, them I assume. Not a lot, more like graphic design. I did it photography somewhat for him, but mainly, maybe grab him, but what I did mo mostly for Revolt was uh, uh, graphic design. Oh, and, you did? Uh, yeah, it was all... No kidding! Yeah, dude, the photography they had covered with other other photographers, and I, I didn't want to compete with them, and I didn't go out and do a lot of night stuff. I was shooting a lot of uh, uh, bands for a company called Rescue Records. P.O.D. I did all their first albums, uh, uh, and, and all their layouts for them, and the layout skills is really what got Revolt interested in me, because I was fast. I knew how to lay out fast, and they could get okay. a three or four pages laid out for, well, you know, a few pieces of pizza, or a few, you know, <laughs> food at Carl Strauss, yeah. Yeah, yeah, beer credit. There we go. Um, yeah, you must, have, you must have been good, because Trevor Watson, mm -hmm. the uh, illustrious founder of Revolt and Style magazine, that was his uh, claim to fame, oh. doing, the, doing the layout. I mean, he always considered himself an art you know, design guy, right? Very much so. His thing was, um, he came was from design, he, he, yeah. and that's what made that magazine, to him, was the way, that the feel he gave to it, but he never was, you know, eventually he turned into a director more than a, a geek, and he was always having, you know, and that's how it got to where it is today. Brian, Brian you know, was kind of the right hand towards the end. Brian Cheerhorse? Yeah, the guy who runs Revolt now. He was doing a lot of the graphic for them and just doing all the legwork and eventually brought his own sense of design and eventually now Revolt's turned into what it is today because of Brian's direction, which is a lot, that, that's how Thaddeus ended up leaving was because the direction Brian was going was different from what uh, Revolt uh, and, and Trevor and Thaddeus thought it was in the first place, according to Thaddeus. I mean, I'm third party, so I don't know. Yeah, well, third, I mean, yeah. Thaddeus was, he was the, the egomaniacal yeah. uh, driving yeah. force of the advertising sales there. And the reason he was, the, yeah, he, he just he was a maniac. Quiet. He was awesome. He just knocked on everybody's door and talked to everybody about anything and always had a good time about it. He was, he was really having good a good time. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. he was always having a good time, huh? Yeah. And that's what it, that's what I was I guess I was trying to talk about earlier. You know? Right, we were talking about sales. How, yeah, how now you've got this really nice studio here. Gallery. And uh, those gallery, well, gallery, you don't you don't work here, you don't shoot here. I do here? work. It's a factory in the rear. I do all the printing. Unfortunately, the art's not all up on the walls right now. I had to show for another artist, and he's not with us, so. So you can shoot right there, basically. That's, I that's did a it great just background. A few minutes ago. Yeah, you did? Yeah. What did you shoot a few minutes ago? Oh, somebody who needs to help with their ego. I'm not. I don't do a lot of commercial stuff anymore. And it's a, it was more of a social thing. Girl, guy. Girl. Yeah. Wanted to shoot some glamour. Or? It was just somebody. The girl who dresses. You know, she's a beautiful young girl who. You know, she dresses yeah. and covers up, and she wants to think she's pretty, and something says she isn't, and so you take pictures, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's an ego boost. Sometimes okay. I. Uh, uh, I'll do stuff like that because I've done so much of it in the past, I guess. Yeah. I don't know what I was doing. Having fun, too. She's a pretty girl. There you but go. But she didn't, uh, there's a long way to go, and I don't know. As far as, you know, get, she's not going to be a model. She doesn't have the confidence, and, and that's what I was really trying to show her that, you know, hey, if this is something you really want to do, this is what it's going to be like. Yeah. Well, I know girls that they're, they're like under five, eight, is it five, eight, or nine? Yeah. The, the, the height standard for a professional model or sure. runway model, but they'll they'll get work on like model mayhem, and they'll guys will hire them, you know. And what it takes is attitude. And they'll they'll get they'll, they're willing oh. to get naked. Guys will pay them like seventy five hundred bucks I've an hour. The, you know, and, and some of the fuggliest and, and whatever. And yeah. It's all about attitude, and yeah. you gotta feel good about yourself. And there's something to be said about you know you watch these people who are halfway successful su successful as models, and what happens to them later in life. That is what the educational institutions are failing miserably at, is building any kind of self-confidence in them because they're all being led to believe they all are part of one same problem. Hmm. It's amazing to me. And, and that's what I was... She seems, she just seems to... In between jobs, you know, or things. Okay. And no, there, there's, I'm totally... No, that's this, this, I'm not even telling anything real because... Tangents I mean, are real. It would be terrible if she was here me talking like that. Well, we're not saying her name, but what's her name? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. It, it's uh, <coughs> you don't want to tell stories out of school, but it's basically the truth. Yeah, and that and, um, and that's it's a very it's uh, it's almost a cliche. It's part of the know? reason I don't do what I do anymore because it's just such a vapid industry that I was working in, particularly now when it doesn't require any kind of like 
real technical skills insofar as understanding ISO, aperture, you know, uh, shutter speed and how they incorporate together to be able to control light because everything these days, look at this thing, we're shooting better than TV quality five, ten years ago. You hold right. that thing in between three fingers. And uh, with that, anybody who has half a business acumen is taking over the wedding photography industry because it was such a huge markup over the decades, you know, other, other aspects of other industries because it doesn't take that background of artistic you know, interpretation of light or whatever it is you're into when it comes to composition. And I've luckily found something that I can't seem to find any other photographers pull off like I do, and, and I get to call it art. And, and now I'm an inventory-based business person versus a service-based business. And sir, we're in the service-based economy, and as a service-based economy, you get paid once for what you do. And then no matter how many times they use my picture or whatever service you did, you only get paid once for it. And the only people making any money in inventory are all the people that made the polyurethane, the asphalt, the rubber on your shoes, the clothes on my back. And they're not in this country. We need to get back to, you know, now, now I'm Oh, preaching. manufacturing. <laughs> well, no, no, inventory-based business is just better model in so far as being able to reap what you sow. You, it's a better way to grow because there's so much competition in everything these days. Unless you're part of the American Medical Association or anything having to do with the educational institution, anything having to do with government, you know, those are the only services that are going to be less that are viable to be able to support yourself. Doing anything where you're servicing any kind of entity, you're in such fierce competition, such fierce competition that it's just... It doesn't make uh, uh, much sense to endeavor upon it because of what the outlook is. Within five years, you have no idea how certain industries are being affected. I mean, and we got so, things are so screwed up. We've got a futures market right now where we've got gold and silver selling on the market right now for less than what it costs to pull out the earth. And now the people who mine the stuff are all closing down. Well, what is gold going at? 1200 now? Uh, yeah, or was it 14? It's about to head down. Oh, it was it 19? You know, in 11? It was it 19? Back in. Back in uh, Oh, day, oh, back in 2017. 17 years ago, it was 400. It was, it was got, and it got up to 800 in 1980. 1979, 80. It got up to 800. Well, wasn't it back down? Oh, it went down to 200 during George Bush. It was down to 2, 300 down during George Bush. During Did you could have got us. You could have got that. one of these. You could have got one of these back in 2003. What, do you have a crew run? <laughs> Heck no, I don't have gold. I wish I had that kind of money. Fuck. This is a, 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 a silver dollar, American. Yeah. Uh, uh, Liberty. Oh, yeah. And back Standing in 2003, you get these for three, four dollars. Right now they're 19. But guess what? Back in 2010, it went up to 50 bucks for one of these. And it's because of the whole, there's more people, there's less stuff. Everybody thinks prices are going up. It doesn't cost any more to make stuff. What's happening is you're becoming worth less. But everybody thinks, no, prices go up because their M&M's worth a dollar. Now they're a dollar fifty. Did you really let me go? Because you got me on camera and I talked hmm. way too no, much. No, no, no. Well, well I, I want to find out what you, what you think about. They're, they're saying that the... Uh, the housing bubble is beginning again. Oh, it's undoubtedly begun. Um, where's the money coming from? It's all these cash buyers who are using what they have as far as equities to be leveraged. And it, it's, it's that middle upper echelon of capital that's being usurped by the banks. The banks already screwed all the people over that couldn't afford their homes using the government as a backstop through, backstop through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Now, 70% of all the mortgages that are being under, underwritten are all underwritten by the government. What is the government using to back that up? Are the bonds? Who's buying the bonds? The FX market, and who's who's putting money into the liquidity of the FX market? Quantitative easing. It's a big sham. You and I are being screwed hard in order to subsidize the idea that too big to fail exists. Because we're heading towards indentured servitude, where monetary policy by central banks is done by people that eventually will be naked in robes, looking like Brad Pitt, and will be iconizing them like gods, just like the last time this happened. It's a repetitive cycle, and human beings are freaking victims of their own success. And what's such a shame is we have such an abundance of wealth that, I mean, if we were to take, just for instance, all the people in the world and gave them an acre of land to do whatever they please, guess what? There's not that many people on the planet. It would barely cover the fucking whole of Australia. And, I mean, people to believe that we're ruining the earth, earth with uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. When I, was seven, when I was back in the 70s, as a child, I'd go to the beach. The fucking sunsets were way more yellow, and when I would come home, my lungs hurt a lot more. It doesn't happen anymore. Now it's in China. We've made things better. We know how to make things better. And they, uh, they, the idea that we're some sort of virus on the planet is just the premise of why I do my art. My art is representative of landmarks where there's architecture and man-made objects with man-made light describing how awesome it is what we do. It's no different than that. Show us, show, <coughs> show, us, show us a couple of your uh, favorite uh, or ones that uh, you can talk about. Yeah, this at. is one of my most famous uh, 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 North Park sign. Oh, yeah. You can dig this by... Nice. See the light on the tree? That's from when the sun was out. Yeah. The way the light wraps around the post, you can't get that in a single shot. You have to, you know, oh, mix really? the light. Yeah, see, that's light from four in the afternoon. The sun sets 
colors on the sky or all the sunset when the sun was going down, and the car house and street lights, the sky had to be black to so see So how that. many photos were there? There's in over a 200 shot in this image. There's 18 different images that I used, but I shot over 200, and I'm blending them all together to describe, you know, the light that our eye is capable of seeing. The camera can only see a limited amount of light, and by shooting a range of tonality that's beyond what our eyes can see, oh. this is how I create my art. So, and it's all, again, about what, representing what, what how you, beautiful it is what we do as human beings. Do you, you know, the asphalt is just as important as the mountains and the trees. And if we don't see it as such, brother, we're screwed. So you mark the pavement and come back with the tripod like Negative. the next day Negative. You've got to be there. I'm there three okay. to four hours. I had police drive right by me when I did the boulevard oh. sign on El Cajon Boulevard. I had the cops bust me, so I ended up leaving my tripod on the middle of the road and running back and forth and chasing down a skateboarder and somebody else who tried to steal my camera. <laughs> oh, God. It's fun what I do. I'm Same thing? Over 200 all, photos? all my images, well, anywhere from 100 to 200. All these images okay. are all done in that fashion, and hence why they look like paintings. Where, where's this one? That's a queen, uh, uh, forgive me, it's Auckland, New Zealand. That's the biggest uh, uh, city in New Zealand. It's not the capital, but it has about 1.6 million people in it. And what wow. you're looking at in the foreground is Devonport. I'm on top of an old World War II battery that they used to protect this harbor. It's all gold that broken down, but the reason the, house, the houses have roofs that are blue is they make them out of tin. And I got a lot of stupid stories. That was the reason that's so nice is the sun. I mean, this, this guy just rained. It was huh. beautiful. It's a great sunset. Yeah, it was amazing. So and this is Mexico? Cape, yeah, how'd you know? Yeah, the Yucatan. Nice. Okay. And what's that one over there? That's uh, Ferndale, Northern California. It's a cemetery. It's, uh, Ferndale was a community that was established in the 1800s by Portu Portuguese immigrants. They came there to settle to... Uh, create dairy and a dairy community for the logging that was going on there. If you look at some of these homes, the detail in some of these uh, 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 awnings and stuff, it's like where Disney got inspiration, the, the woodworking. You know, you see nice stuff around here in your, in your North Parks and your Golden Hills with the woodworking, the, the craftsmen, craftsmen yeah. but this is just the, beyond belief, some of the stuff they did. Oh, really? And let alone, they put all the dead people on this hill so they get the best view, right up past this oh, well. as, uh, ocean. That's our ancestors. You've got to respect the ancestors, yeah. I guess. Huh? Well, you do your own framing, too, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, your... shop. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, you know, so do you do you jobs or do you, do you just only do your own work here? I've done, I've got a frame, I don't, I don't, I was advertising up front about doing framing, but remember what I was saying earlier about business, service-based business, I did it because I thought I was, I needed to do something desperate, and it's really not something I'm focusing on now, I put the framing back here, and I wanted, I'll, I'll frame for people, but I'm not advertising anymore, I want to just sell my art, and that's really what I'm focusing on doing, and you know, ever since I set 100% my art, I did the OB chili cook-off, best show I've ever had in a single day. And it was just because I put 100% effort into that. Now I'm going to Gasland Farmer's Market to fill up my weekends when I'm not doing shows. I'm setting records because that's all I'm focusing on is just my art. Mm -hmm. The more, you know, the, the more we all can just figure out what the hell we want and what we're willing to do. Now I'm preaching. Well, there's, the, there's the technical problem. side and then there is the sales side. And you were saying earlier you had somebody doing sales for you that was a total... Uh, he was, a, he was an ego maniac, but he was a great salesman. <laughs> but he didn't, he didn't, there was something about his style. That didn't it was, his him. style was such that he was under the premise, you know what it was, I'll tell you honest to God. I, it, this guy worked for me probably about a total of 12 hours in two days. In 12 hours and two days, he didn't hardly touch anything but a credit card reader and a pen to write things down. And in those amount of time, he made 700 and almost 800 bucks. And that's more money than I've ever paid anybody for time. I bought equipment, I that bought was all things. Commission? What? That was all his commission? All his commission. And how long? In 12 hours, two days. He huh. worked two six-hour shifts at an art show for me. He made himself, you know, what I said, seven, 700 plus. Okay? Wow. So then he comes to pay, get the money, because I wanted to make sure it came through all the credit cards. So three days later, he comes through. I lay the money on the table. Catch. And we, he begins to talk about all, because I'm a client of his, and, and he begins to talk about all these things he's going to do to help my business. And he's been talking about it since the two weeks prior to we meeting, and none of which had been implemented. And, and then, for like an hour and a half, there's $700 sitting on the table that he never picked up. And to me, I just found that really disrespectful, and it just goes on to show, from that, he went on to show me how, you know, the reason he said he wasn't, you know, I got him to be honest with me, he said he didn't want to sell my $40 prints. That's what he didn't plan on doing, because he came from a world where he was selling $10,000 prints. You know, and he didn't plan on doing that. And he's thinking that he's going to grow my business, but yet the only time I see him is when he's coming to collect his commission hmm. that he doesn't respect. Hmm. You know, and then he comes over. The worst thing, well, he came over with another artist, and now he wants me to do art with another artist, where he's this other artist more internationally known, and I'm going to give him art, and I get nothing but recognition. How is that helping me? 
And that kind of ego thing, I just well, I couldn't get him to focus on my business. I, I, I was trying to look at all sides. I mean, what if he would have smashed it right away and counted every dollar? I mean, some people would have been offended by that. No. Well, you don't trust me? You're counting the money right in front of me? No, I would have expected that. I would, <laughs> that's, that's that. I, mean, I would do that. I would, I, I would expect that. most people would do it. I would hope But I that. know some people that would say that they I wanted would be, to know there was... I wanted yeah. a clear, physical, real-life... Yeah. Remember that we talked about futures markets the world... Confirmation. I wanted yeah. confirmation of yeah. why he was here. Right. And he wouldn't admit to it, and he kept second-guessing it. Okay. And he was just... He, I can he, see that. He's a sales guy. Sales, certain sales people that are good. And then I, you know... You don't need a sales guy as long as you... Because you know what it was? The guy believed in my work so much so that he was like a pitcher on the mound during the World Series when he stepped into my booth. He was so oh, focused. Oh, yeah. You said he, he, was so he would focused. say your name with, in he a certain way. He said my name better than anybody said my name before. And with that, he believed in what I was doing. And I brought that to my latest show two weeks ago. Well, not my latest this weekend, but the weekend before. What was that? OB Chili Cook-Off. It wasn't even Art Walk. It wasn't yeah. even OB Chili Cook-Off. I set a record that blew his away right. with the pretty girl, obviously, in my booth. But she she was helping me, and she believed in my work as much as I did. But neither of us had sales experience. We just knew what we were doing. We wanted why we wanted to be there. We and only that's have what it takes. We only have a little bit of time left yeah, on this I'm file. So Let me I'm so tell me tell me about this one with the big oversized uh, <coughs> frame, frame over here. What is this? Is that? Uh, did did, did you frame those two? I, I you know I have a whole uh, my wholesaler do all the actual cutting. And, Fitting. I only play the mount, but in other words, I put the glass on and the I mount. But this is a really nice olive wood veneer frame. This is Roma from Italy. This is a seamless uh, mat, the CNC made with the textile. Um, the, the, the cost here is... is uh, so it's just like two, two. Yeah, so it's just Oh, like yeah, yeah, okay. It's two-thirds of the cost is the frame alone. But oh. I also have a styrene frame. These recycled surfboards, they look very similar. People love them, and they're freaking, they're, they're, excuse me, they're very, very affordable. Okay. Even compared to the wood frames. And what's nice about the styrene, the recycled surfboard frames, is they last longer, and you're not cutting down any wood. And they're not as susceptible to the environment because they're, they're styrene. They're rigid. They're not nice. like wood, so. Eco-friendly, huh? Yeah, no? I, I'm, I'm into that. <laughs> well, we only, uh, well, real quick, um, where, where is the next show? Yeah, well, hey, my pleasure. Where, where is the next, the next show? show? This, will, this will probably go live tonight or tomorrow. So, um, We're having the next show. Ray Diaz, local famous artist. Uh, uh, he does, I hope this is appropriate to call it splatter paint, but really visual stuff. A lot of, he, I've seen his the last show he here. did. He'll be here July 19 and 20. Uh, hmm? and come 6 to 9, all night long, fresh refreshments, anyone 21 up, uh, we'll beer and live music. Okay, and uh, address, phone number, and website. Address, 1815 Fifth Avenue, 92101, between Gaslap and, and um, uh, Hillcrest, right in the heart of Bankers Hill. Right by the Tin Can Ale House. Right by the Tin Can Ale House. Next the, door to the liquor store. Next door to the liquor store. And, and your phone number website, you want phone to do Phone number, 619-231-9061, and the website, www.luminous-views.com, or much easier, www.lightviews.com painted landscapes.com. Good. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.